Hello and welcome back to Bolts. This is Bio Enchanted, and today we'll be going through the final part of the dam level. This is quite an interesting part of the game. I really enjoy this part, and it was the part that really sold me on the game as a whole. Calipor shipment to Peitai, China Harbor. Five days. I think we better stop these missiles. This level's going to be kind of interesting. Uh, this whole section of the game is quite neat. It's got a lot of uh, interesting visual aspects. But first we have a fairly basic fight to get through. So let's get through it, shall we? And of course we've got some... Uh, not very well hidden, but it's not really intentionally hidden. But, you know, we've got some very obvious upgrades to find, so that's neat. So it's time for our usual trick of just breaking everything in sight. While of course trying to take care of the uh, these guys. Which according to an achievement I got it, while I was playing ahead of the game earlier today, they're actually called Glovies. Not Whippies. I think. The Glovies might be the electric guys, it might have been that I was misreading the achievement, but yeah. Either way, let's take care of these guys, shall we? I quite like all the little moving parts, though, like the whole, like, uh, my little conveyor belt on the left and things. It's a neat little uh, thing to add a little. Uh, a little variety to the visuals. Because otherwise, we've just been in this massive dam all for like, the last, like, million levels. And that could otherwise have got quite dull, so it's nice to have all these kind of uh, these ways that the game has of differentiating the different parts of each set of levels. If that makes any sense. But there's the whippy taken care of. I kind of prefer whippy to glovey if that is the, uh, what the game's getting at, because it reminds me of the ice cream. I probably made that joke before. But of course they have a few more guys, uh, these guys that move really quickly, I hate those guys. Quite like that she just ran straight into the whip guy, that was really funny. There's a lot of that kind of uh, interaction between enemies, so that's quite charming when it happens. Because it's just something that you can't intentionally show off, it just happens and it's just like, yeah, that's funny. Well done. Because it definitely helps the fights feel more chaotic and more like an actual fight. To have the enemies constantly getting each other's way trying to take care of this super dog. It adds a little bit of realism to it that I appreciate. Because of course in this kind of a fight with like a million people all using a bunch of different weapons and things. It's not going to be a very tidy situation, it's going to be a mess. Especially when guys are showing up with like sweeping attacks with whips and throwing bombs everywhere. It's like, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare to deal with, logistically speaking. And now that I've actually beaten the game with the replay, I can say for certain the dam is actually the longest section of the game. Even the other like, levels that have like a bunch of different levels in them aren't as long as the dam. The dam's like got eight, so I think the next longest has like five. So yeah, there's definitely a bit of a pacing issue where the dam can kind of start getting a little bit meandering and getting a little bit on the nerves. But now we have the powerful laser eyes. And he's facing that tunnel, but that tunnel's actually nothing. Literally, there's no collectibles there, it's not even really a tunnel. It's just kind of there.
It's time to use our laser eyes to cut through what previously took a cannon to blow down. It does definitely does a good job of showing how much more powerful our attacks are getting, the fact that we can do more and more ridiculous uh, environmental damage with them. Like before that required a cannon to take down, now we've weakened it with really powerful laser eyes and we can just smash it now. This part's a little bit tricky because you have to know to get moving immediately and if you scoop a little bit you get traps like this and you die. It's a really annoying part of the game, uh, but when you know what you're doing, it's not that bad. You just have to kind of be pixel perfect. There we go. And now, of course, we're Penny now. And again, yeah, the game does this a lot more often as it goes on, with switching between Bolt and Penny in a more fluid way. Which definitely helps the sense of progression in the game in general, because it feels like the operations are getting more complex as Bolt and Penny have to more directly work together, rather than just having Bolt do one thing and then Penny do another. And yeah, these get very difficult. This isn't one of them, I just thought I'd mention that, because I had a lot of trouble with some of the later ones in the replay. I mean, they get to kind of Neo Automata levels of difficulty. And on this one, you have more than three hits. Also, notice in the background, in that window, there's someone there, but they don't seem to be paying much attention to us. That's interesting, that is. I wonder what's going on there. They don't really seem that bothered that Penny's here right now. She went very Texan there, didn't she? I'm in! As far as I'm aware, those spawners can't actually be killed by normal bullets. It has to be in at least spread mode or super spread. I think that's the case. It definitely feels as if they don't take any damage if you're not using a basic weapon in this mode, and that's really annoying. Because it means if you get into a bad loop of dying and having to, you have to then we collect all the all the power ups and get them back again and everything, and so it means it puts you in a big disadvantage. That's one of the main problems I have with this section of the game. Uh, this little minigame thing is that can get quite annoying and difficult at times. Now it's time for a more elaborate platforming section. That actually reminds me quite a bit of the first puzzle in Prince of Persia. <laughs> of course, sounds of time. Of course, you need to go left first and not get hit by the steam. I didn't even see it spawn as the main problem. I was kind of on top of it when it spawned. That was me being impatient and stupid. Generally, if you see that little kink in the pipe right there, that's how you know the steam is going to be coming from there, so just be generally careful when you see those little kinks. Just stop. Like that one example. You see that kink there, that's it kind of like... I almost got caught out by that one, then realised I was right on top of it. I was like, ah, move now. You really need to be able to uh, get that kind of a visual uh, cue and notice when the game's doing that. This is a surprisingly subtle cue for the kind of game this is as well. It's very kind of hard to see unless you know what it's going to do with it ahead of time. It's a very, very slight kink. It's not like it's like a massive break in the pipe. Now 
and of course there are some people up here to deal with. But at least it's a very narrow path, so it's actually quite easy to hit them. Problems have to be very, very accurate, so hitting them can be a problem. Before we go for that, though, well, well now we've gone for that, we can also go in the other direction. Because there is, of course, something in the other direction that I don't want to accidentally miss. There we go. I don't think I could have jumped over there. But yeah, sometimes these swingy poles can be a real nightmare to deal with. It is kind of finicky exactly when you should leap off them. It seems a little arbitrary sometimes and that can be a big problem. I do quite like the music in this game, including in these sections. It's got a good kind of atmosphere to it, and it generally and um, it generally fits the areas. And some of the later tracks are kind of neat. It's generally very kind of generic spy music, but it works for the uh, tone the game's trying to set because it is kind of meant to be a generic spy show. The game, of course, being that it's a dog. And part of the difficulty in some of these later stages comes not in these massive rooms where there's a billion things and no walls, it's when there's a lot of walls that can become a problem because then you can get flanked. But we'll see that when we see it for now. Let's finish this level off, shall we? And see why I like the end of the dam so much. Focusing mirrors? This is Dad's satellite, not a warhead. <sighs> Give my best to Sputnik, dear. This level is what's properly sold me on this game. Because this is awesome. And yeah, the reason that goon in the window was ignoring us, it wasn't a problem that we were there. That was entirely part of the plan. I really quite like that little bit of foreshadowing as well, the, that goon's just kind of hanging out there, even with everything exploding, the goon's not really giving him uh, any kind of care, because you're kind of supposed to be there. They want you to get up to the rocket so that this will happen. It's just a really cool set piece to be like, wandering around on the outside of this massive rocket and tearing it to pieces, piece by piece, it's just, it's a really satisfying set piece. And it's generally just, um, while it's a bit slow, it's cinematic and it works quite well and I quite like the whole like landscape beneath you as well as you're performing the uh, feat of, well, being be awesome. <laughs> Let's find the other way out, the other uh, thing, shall we? Of course, the problem with these rocket, this rocket is you kind of need to uh, be at the just the right moment, but luckily there isn't really a time limit here. But before we actually go for that second panel, let's get our health upgrade. It's 
kind of a funny sound effect though with this squeaking down the rocket because it's like when you slam into a, when someone slams into a window in a cartoon and just kind of like just flops down the glass like an idiot. It reminds me of that, but it's just a kind of messes with the tone of otherwise really cool sequence. There's a few levels that are, that are this kind of like a uh, unique challenge that varies based on. Uh, like the, it's different to the usual kind of challenge of just beating up enemies or sneaking through things and that's what makes this game special is that it's willing to do these kind of experimental levels where you're doing something really unusual and really interesting and very kind of big climax James Bondy kind of a thing. I also quite like that at this point um, uh, the rockets actually physically tear into pieces in the atmosphere Partially because the we've ripped off the tail fin, so of course it can't steer itself properly. Here's the switch. Also, just the way the rocket kind of um, um, is disassembled. It has a mildly, not quite realistic. But it kind of a uh, you can imagine this kind of being how a rocket in one of these kind of stories would get torn to pieces is that sort of an idea. This part's a bit tricky to know what to do though because it's kind of not obvious you have to break these little yellow things, but that's what you have to do. It's kind of like opened up a little bit after we blow from the nose cone. I also just quite like it comes like spinning through the sky and the ground and everything. It was a really interesting kind of sense of vertigo with not being able to really like uh, stay on top of the rocket so to speak. You can tell Bolt's just kind of digging his claws in here with hoping for the best. Now let's get her out of here shall we? I was really glad that the music gets a lot quieter here, and a lot more kind of uh, tender now that the main part of the danger is over and she's nearly safe. It's like, it's just this final little, um, Dunemant. Like a mini climax of the mini Dunemant of its own, and that's really interesting. Just happened. Bolt. 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 Oh. <laughs> You're a good boy. I like that that cutscene kind of attempts to humanise Penny a little bit by having her get just temporarily a little overwhelmed by all the shit that just happened. <laughs> it's a very nice little touch. It shows where the writing's trying to shine. But I'll see you all next time oh as we go to the docks. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Nothing's happening! Goodbye.